Welcome uh, to our panel, Blockchain, Taking Your Organization to Infinity and Beyond. I spoke to a lot of you guys uh, lately and uh, some really brilliant minds out there. And um, I know that uh, you guys were, a lot of stuff that I got back is you want to try to stump us with some questions, right? So I have a surprise for you. Our first uh, section that we're going to do is I'm going to ask you some questions which are going to be very engaging and we're going to, it's going to direct how we are going to uh, just have our panel discussion, okay? So can I get a uh, raise of hands to uh, these questions, okay? To you, what yep. is blockchain? And I would like somebody to answer that in one sentence, one quick sentence. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, pick on some random people. It's okay. It's all right. What is, what is, uh, what is blockchain to you? How would you describe it? Uh, he will uh, explain that. It's okay. I, I, this is a survey. I want to know what the general public is. There's a method to my madness. I will take a photo. <laughs> Uh, okay, go ahead, sir. So, uh, blockchain for many of them is a cryptocurrency uh, at large, but uh, essentially it brings in a lot of transparency in any transaction, probably the safest uh, way to transact as we go along. Thank you. So, um, any data structure used to store information can be considered a database. Blockchain technology at its core is no more than a ledger to store information about transactions. To that point, blockchains can be considered databases. Um, the, next, the next question I want to uh, ask is, how is blockchain used? Can I get some volunteers? Um, I think the biggest example of blockchain would be the Bitcoin uh, database that we're all talking about today and people know about it. So like you mentioned, it is a ledger and um, yeah, all transactions of Bitcoin are getting stored on blockchain. So that's okay. a use case. Okay. Um, blockchains are used as a digital ledger to store transaction information. The data is stored as signed blocks with a link to each other, creating a chain and connecting the data entries. So um, does anybody know how a blockchain assigns a new block? Okay. Um, to sign a new block, a node needs to find a SHA-256 signature that matches specific criteria. To do so, it will use a special field in the uh, node to brute force possible solutions. Any new block needs to be validated with the majority of the validation nodes forming the blockchain. Once the block has been validated, it is added to all the nodes of the blockchain. The, this way of validating new blocks is called the proof of work and is pre very prevalent in um, the earlier days of blockchain technology. Nowadays, other methods for validating have emerged such as the proof of stake. I'm sure you all heard of that. Um, so how does blockchain get updated, right? A blockchain consists of nu numerous blocks of data. These blocks of data are stored on nodes that can be compared to small servers. On a blockchain, all the nodes are considered to each other and they can consistently exchange the newest information on the blockchain with each other. This ensures all nodes are updated. So the reason why I asked you all those uh, questions in the beginning is because when the typical public hear the word blockchain or cryptocurrency, they often think it's just Bitcoin. So what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is Blockchain is so much more than that. Blockchain can be interpreted as a database that is shared across a network of computers. Once a record has been added to the chain, it is very unlikely to be able to make changes. 
in this application process, the network will do a consistent check to make sure all the database copies are the same. There are over 18,000 cryptocurrencies in existence, and there are different kinds of blockchain platforms and different ways they can perform their work. Some blockchains function as proof of work, proof of stake, voting, or multiple party consensus. They, they could be a public, private, or hybrid blockchain. With so many different blockchain technologies available at our arsenal, it is no wonder why so many companies and senior executives from around the world have identified getting into blockchain as a critical priority. So our, pan our panel here, we are not here to tell you how to run your organization, but we just want you to recognize you do not need to reinvent the wheel for everything. Take the free and available tools that blockchain technology has given us. Perhaps you may decide, uh, perhaps you may decide to cut cost by eliminating the middleman, vendors, third party providers, or perhaps you want to crowdfund your entire next venture by a initial coin offering. Think of your business biggest challenge or obstacle uh, and there's, pro there's probably a way uh, we, we, we can solve it, right? So blockchain is like tapping into an API and getting all these tools and resources you are all a sudden have available. Blockchain platform does not just um, function as a currency. We can have an affiliate number of utilities as far as humans and the human mind can innovate with it. Sure, there are plenty of naysayers who claim they ha um, plenty of naysayers who claim that certain blockchain applications are only theoretical, but the world's top businesses have already done it. So much that the world's top business leaders have stopped asking whether blockchain will work and have started asking how is blockchain going to disrupt the industry. Now I would like to invite the rest of the panels the chance to speak about those experiences and ways you can use blockchain to take your organization to infinity and beyond. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I am Mehmet Ali. Uh, I am the, I'm coming from Turkey based. We have a company named GM Informatics based in Turkey and Estonia. And lately for four or five years, uh, we are working on blockchain technologies that how can businesses, apart from the cryptocurrencies I am talking right now, how can businesses uh, benefit from the decentralized, le decentralized ledgers or, or the blockchain technologies? So let's make an analogy on this uh, and turn back to 25 years ago, which is approximately uh, 1996 or so. And we are in the same panel. Let's think about that. And we are talking about internet at that time. I think most of the participants here will answer like, yeah, we're going to use internet on banking. We're going to use internet to, to do some shopping things. But at that time, we were using dial-up modems. And we even do not have any mobile that, that is using 5G or 4G. At least I remember WAP, WAP technology, which was on my Siemens S50 mobile phone. I was just just able to connect uh, not more than five or uh, ten sites and just looking to them. And this is the same uh, place that we are in blockchain at the moment. So, um, and let's. Uh, give an example to this. Uh, Winston Churchill has a word that has a cliche, and Milton Friedman, also American economist, uh, also states this. If you put two economists in the same room, they, they mostly have more than two options. And what about the blockchain? If you put two blockchain architectures, which is a new word here, a uh, new uh, position in businesses, blockchain architecture, 
they, they often tend to have more than tens of profitable ways uh, to, to make your uh, organization, to, to pitch your organization to the uh, profitable way. So blockchain is yet started with Bitcoin. Everybody knows Bitcoin here. Everybody, some, some people also traded in, in cryptocurrency exchanges. I am not sure, but that is the another part of the blockchain. As you stated, these are distributed ledgers, which mostly conceptual, and yet uh, individuals use this technology in trade systems, in, and in cryptocurrency exchanges as, as to make profit or to get loss. So, um, but the conceptual side, and we are working on uh, to make these decentralized ledgers uh, to to sustain businesses to uh, uh, to for for the less cost. So we are working on them in in Turkey and Estonia. And the, my friend also have some statements on this. So. So, so let me let me stick to the basics on whatever the answers that we got from the crowd as to what a blockchain is. So, as as my friend told, blockchain is you know like the internet of the 90s, and as big as that. And uh, blockchain has many applications. But one thing what we need to understand as basics is blockchain is not spelled as B I T C O I N. Blockchain is not Bitcoin, right? It is like telling, uh, you know, YouTube is the you know, reason behind the internet. Of course, YouTube is powered by internet, but internet does not do only YouTube. There are a lot more applications. Similarly, blockchain, Bitcoin, of course, works on blockchain, but that is not the only thing that, that, that we do. Let, let me give you a small example so that, you know, everyone here understands. Right? Let's take a, a, a kitty party, right? So uh, what is kitty party? You have a group of women sitting, going for a party, sitting and playing a pack of cards, right? And they all put their money, right? They all put their money, they have good time and they come back. Now, when you put, everybody is putting their money, whom do I trust here, right? There must be one person to whom I'm giving all the money, right? That, that's the centralized thing where I am trusting that person to take care of all the money that I have given him, right? But if I have to fraud, I have to, you know, I have to bribe that person so that that person, uh, you know, commits the fraud. But when you do a decentralized thing where I split the money across, I split the money across, there is no one person uh, I have to uh, fraud on. So I have to go back to all the 10 people who are in the kitty party to create that fraud. So this kind of security is what a blockchain provides, right? So if you expand this, if you expand this kitty party, you know, into, into lot more times, what you get is a bank or what you get is, uh, you know, what we call in India more of a chit fund companies, right? So this is where the applications of blockchain starts. People think that, uh, you know, blockchains are adopted by others first, but blockchains today, are first adopted by the banks because they know that it is going to disrupt them today or tomorrow. That is the reason blockchain is being more adopted by the banks and other institutions. Of course, there is a lot of you know restrictions from the government end that and, and that, that will continue. That will continue, but as a regulation and as adoption, blockchain will continue to adopt a long way. Very fascinating. Thank you. Um, I happen to know I talked to you guys before, and um, you know, there's two of us that uh, ha have worked on creating our own token. Um, myself and uh, this gentleman right here. Um, would you like to talk about your experiences with um, with you developing your own token and, and using it as an ICO? Uh, yeah, I don't want to give uh, much okay. advertorial here, yeah. but it's okay. But. Uh, the blockchain thing is associated with some, 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 uh, you know, other uh, words as well, like tokenization, like decentralization. But what if we look at the blockchain basics? Are you know, it, it is immutable, it is unchangeable. If you if you if you try to change it, 
some technical way it says uh, you fork it. Uh, but um, the original uh, block is, 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 is defunct, is defected. So uh, it is unchangeable. Uh, along with this, it, is, it has the anonymity thing. I mean, if, if we are talking about the private blockchain and mostly public blockchains are also anonymous. And yet we have started the um, cloud adventure many years ago. Like uh, in the in the 90 years, uh, we were using some some main frames. We were using after that we we called them servers, uh, and the application layer comes and we put them some database servers and application servers etc. And they hosted the end user. This is a last mile solution. So uh, you can whether think shopping something or or buying a ticket or anything. So. Uh, after cloud, this cloud thing, the decentralization has appeared with, with, with a blockchain thing, which is the start of the Ethereum at, at uh, 2001, for, uh, 14 around. Uh, this, this changed our mindset. So uh, we have experiencing this, this, this blockchain thing in our company, but we name it as a tokenization. So what we are trying to do is, you know, uh, there are business layers. What we call the first layer is the blockchain, and the second layer is the industry layer. The third layer is the function layer, which are the business function. And the fourth layer is the front end layer that the end users, that the corporations shows uh, like an app. Sometimes we call this decentralized apps, but we call it business apps. So uh, we want to tokenize the whole thing. There's a, there's a messy thing, actually, because you have to know the industry, which is our core industry is IT, ICT services. We are in subscription-based services, which is the third layer, functional layer. So we are trying to tokenize the subscription-based businesses. That is what we are offering to to, to, to companies, to SMBs. And let me give you a last example on this. Mm -hmm. The subscription-based industry is $160 billion. You can include this your telco operator, you can include this Netflix or any other satellite subscription there. So this is a big industry. What if we tokenize this? So uh, in a bad way, you are going out of the local currencies. So let's think. If you buy a Netflix token and you stake it to a smart contract, which is our first layer here, we are trying to aim. And since you hold it, you continue using their services. This creates a organic demand, which is the economic factor. You know, economic stock, supply and demand. If you create organic demand, then your price goes up, which is mostly cryptocurrencies in the market is based on hypes, not created for organic demand. So we want to differentiate on this. So this, uh, you know, they say this is a, we're in an internet 3.0 world. What would you say to all the startups or the companies that are here that are just starting out and they're trying to get funding? Um, you know, what would you would you say that doing an ICO is um, would be you would recommend to them or not? Uh, would, uh, it can go to either, uh, either of you. Most countries, most regulations or frameworks um, does not allow initial coin offering operations. However, there are some alternative ways to go around the laws, as we all know. Yeah. However, we are not suggesting that. But first of all, SMBs must seek for the regulator framework. If they are okay on that, there is no problem to do the ICO part. Yeah, so uh, in my experience, um, I was... Uh you know, before I was working, uh, you know, full time and everything, I, I decided to go in the startup world. Uh, you know, build my own blog and and um, we'll work on building a token. Right. Um, typically, in the startup world, you kind of run into where your friends and your uh, kind of your team will kind of quit if they're not getting paid right away and so forth. Right. So um, we were working on creating our own token, and um, during that time, there was 
a lot of regulations that started coming about, like in the fresh new age of when ICO started, um, like getting funding get, just because Ethereum was so big and people wanted to invest in everything small because it would just blow up. And quite honestly, it was happening and it was happening so much that 98% of them were kind of just like, all you needed to do was get a white paper and then boom, like, you know, you had some platform going on and then it was exploding. So um, for me and our team, um, we ran into a time when everything was getting developed and uh, basically there was so much regulation, right? And um, compliance that it was just time for us to um, kind of bail out because we got out a, a little bit late. So um, that was kind of like what I was trying to get into, answering those questions too. So um, I still think, you know, if you, um, there's many different countries here and so forth, um, we can all, you know, you gotta make sure you follow your, your compliance regulation. There's so many rules and things that are happening, you know, everywhere. So um, I do think that a lot of money in that can be made. And in this internet 3.0 world, you know, we're doing NFTs for this, NFTs for that. And I really, you know, believe the way that this blockchain stuff is going is we're going to be able to, like we, you know, we're gonna, say you Google your own name, right? You find stuff about you. I think we're coming into the world where we're going to be able to like look at someone's wallet, right? Look at, be like, oh, this person, right? Look at there and be like, what NFTs did they create? What kind of, pe like you can literally, um, like say you wrote a book, you can now promote that book on the blockchain and, and, and tokenize it. Make an NFT and you can authenticate it that it's real or not. And then you can do like multiple things like, um, you know, if, if they resell it, you can, in the contract, you can say, I want a commissioner if you resell it. There's so many things that have been done that we're in, like, a great world and innovation area right now. So to, to start up your business and get funding, this is why blockchain is so, so popular, and it can seriously benefit you to use these free t tools and resources that we have available. So, so just to add to that. Yes, please. You know, it is important to know how to, uh, how this entire ICO comes up. Uh, ICO is like an IPO, where, where in, in, in a stock market, you, um, whenever a new company launches, they launch something called the IPO. And the same thing on the crypto market, they call it the ICO. But it is very important to understand what is the association of, uh, you know, these cryptocurrencies with the actual projects that are, go that, that, that are going on. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a small example as how this entire, why is it required uh, for a cryptocurrency to be associated with a blockchain, right? Because many of them think that blockchain is independent and the cryptocurrencies are independent. So, um, so, so what happens is when uh, this guy called Satoshi Nakamoto found, uh, you know, uh, the, the blockchain, right? So what happens is people, uh, there is no one person who is going to manage it. It is uh, distributed across, it is decentralized. So many people are going to manage this chain, right? So now these many people who are managing the chain need, uh, you know, they, they're, they're going to use the power, they're going to use the electricity, they're going to use the computers and the energy to, uh, you know, to, to authorize the chains. But now, how do you pay these people? How do we really incentivize these peoples? So this uh, guy, Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever found the blockchain or the Bitcoin did one very smart thing. So what he did is he started incentivizing uh, these blockchains through a currency, right? So because it was a blockchain based, uh, Bitcoin based blockchain, he called it a Bitcoin. So in the similar way, every project that is, going to look, that is going to come, it can be an infrastructure project, it can be transport, it can be something assisting with the logistics and the transport. So every blockchain, has associated with the cryptocurrency because that is the only way to incentivize it. So if somebody is talking that I will do only blockchain, but no, uh, I will not incentivize, incentivize with the cryptocurrency, it might not work. People are trying it out. It might not work because there are people who are managing these blockchains, people who are, are taking care of these blockchains, they're spending their energy time. So unless you incentivize with some kind of a cryptocurrency, those are the currencies which are currently there in the market, which you call the Ethereum or which you call the Polkadot or uh, whatever uh, cryptocurrencies are there in the market. So unless that is being incentivized, you will not be able to understand why uh, you know the, the ledger or uh, the Bitcoin goes together. So whenever you are looking at a particular project, whenever you are trying to uh, invest in a cryptocurrency, it is very much necessary to understand what is the underlying 
problem that particular project is trying to solve. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to add something to this. The, the most essential way there are, which I'm going to talk about the tokenization actually, there are two main token types, which is a security, which is mostly associated with somehow your equities, your company shares, etc., which is mostly regulated and, and need compliance and need admissions from the, from the regulators and the, and the governments. And the other one is the utility token, which, which uh, most ICO projects uh, tends to or wants to enter, but what we call is the project plan is the white paper of this. So uh, the, the white papers, you can name it yellow paper or blue paper, some are technical, some are economical, some have tokenization metrics, which we mostly call tokenomics. So prior investing, which is apart from this main topic, uh, people must uh, examine this so much. But we, we, we have to change our mindset that how we use decentralized blockchains, distributed ledgers, tokenizations in our small business operations, functions, etc. So this is a different mindset actually. That most of the uh, developers, most of the business process managers don't have at the moment. Maybe we're going to have uh, have that mindset in the following years. But since the the technology metrics are not staged on a right way, uh, this yields to many scams, as you know, at the moment. So uh, we're getting close to time for taking lunch. So I want to uh, make sure we can get all these questions answered. All right. Thank you. Uh, so Sri, I think you've touched upon this topic, but I wanted to kind of uh, ask again about the role of miners in cryptocurrency. Uh, not that out of the <laughs> Closer to my face, okay. Uh, so my question is about, if you could explain a little bit about role of miners uh, in blockchain and uh, what kind of benefit a miner could get. Uh, because we were trying to decouple blockchain and cryptocurrency, but I think cryptocurrency is a vital part for miners, and miners are vital for blockchain. So, you, you, uh, how, uh, what is the role of miners in this? What is the role, and how do we kind of incentivize if we decouple? Okay, so 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 let me explain that again. So so what happened? Uh, what happened when uh, uh, this Satoshi Nakamoto created uh, the blockchain? Right, so this blockchain, nobody is going to maintain this blockchain. For example, let me give you a simple example. If I transfer money from India to Dubai, right, what happens is that uh, the money, it's, it's a ledger based system. The money gets deducted in the ledger in India and it gets deposited in the ledger in your account in Dubai, right? So, but what happens uh, due to our, in, in our current system are there are intermediaries, right? Now you have banks, you have financial institutions, you have brokers. Right? So now the entry has to be made in all these places. So that is the reason when I transfer the money from India to Dubai, when I transfer you 100 rupees, you might probably receive 95 rupees because uh, you have to pay all this and all these ledgers has to be updated. Right? So it is, that is the reason. Now I, when I move from a centralized to a decentralized uh, a thing, what happens is I use one node which is connected to all this. Right. Whenever I make a new entry, there is one uh, block which is being established, and a new block gets added. Right. So now, who has to authorize this? All these people who are maintaining this network has to authorize this. Right. Now, uh, to authorize this, I need to use the power of my computer because uh, uh, the mining capacity is very high these days. I need to. I, I'm using my electricity. I'm using my uh, uh, you know computers and energy. Everything. So now uh, this, this guy, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto did one wonderful thing, right? Now when all these people are maintaining this, they have to be incentivized somehow, okay? When these people are approving those ledgers, those people became minus, right? Those people became minus uh, because they are approving. Now, how do I uh, incentivize these people? Because they started mining, 
okay he created a currency around it because it was a bitcoin based currency he called it bitcoin he because it was a bitcoin based blockchain he called it bitcoin so now everybody the, uh, who is mining it gets a part of bitcoin because he is approving those ledgers he is maintaining this uh, uh, you know chain that is the reason that is how these guys uh, got uh, incentivized so that is where these miners became earners so initially when you see when the mining started for bitcoin they were able to mine one two bitcoin but now there are some, since only 21 million bitcoins the mining power has gone and the incentives are very very less because there are more people who are approving in that ledger so that is how miners came into the market and that is how incentives come into the market so when a new currency or a new blockchain adds to the market it is very important as to what is the problem that block blockchain is trying to solve is it trying to solve uh, let's say a okay, kyc let's say a uh, transportation and logistics let's say that you go and buy a uh, fish in the supermarket today right you really don't know how fresh the uh, fish is you don't know how fresh the fish is now imagine a blockchain concept where right from the time fish was taken out of the water okay after its logistics and the cold storage until it it is sold to you right when you take the fish out there is something there's a scanner or i don't know whatever it is which tells you that this fish was taken yesterday at this time this was in cold storage for 2 hours and now it is with you so now you cannot break this you exactly know how you know a uh, uh, nice the fish is i think <laughs> lunch time coming so <laughs> <laughs> Everybody uh, looking at us funny. Uh, so that's like how a, that's how it starts. We got like a minute left and I really know uh someone's anxious to ask some questions too. Um I'll just end it basically, just basically just saying for the mining thing, you can never get back time. What you're mining today? We are, we are. We're, we're going to take it but I just say I'm just saying he deserved this question yesterday. <laughs> you need to take it. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. Okay guys, so uh, good discussions about blockchain. I've seen that a lot of startups today try to get onto the blockchain buzzword to raise funding and then they fail it would be helpful if the panelists can actually talk about uh, the use cases or the the criteria for when a blockchain is actually relevant and when it's not so that there is no uh, I mean, so what basically what are the criteria when you should try to use a blockchain for your benefit versus uh, marketing Uh, I can answer that, but I couldn't hear you well. But actually, I think you are asking that um, people are mostly using this blockchain thing for creating funds. So you are saying that this must be uh, usable for other vertical and horizontal industries. I think so. What are the correct reasons when you should actually choose to use the blockchain for your product? rather than just for marketing just saying i'm a blockchain based company does not help yeah so yeah, from a product perspective what should be a mindset of an entrepreneur to say you know what this is a good use case for using the blockchain uh, uh, that will need a big discussion however um, as far as as i see it has been already using in logistics i don't know the details cause i am in subscription based sector and actually we are using the tokenization method for this not just talking about you know funding sale the, the the tokens and getting fund from them and and doing some projects um let me give you a small example and then we can have a lunch i think so um right now our customers or consumers or small businesses want to get benefit from IT ICT services which are subscription based you can say it monthly be monthly etc basically they have to pay in turkish lira in turkey but we have tokenized this procedure we have a front end app and we have a hybrid solution we are not claiming that we are fully tokenized company that is our vision uh, this may this may cost many years and we may need the regulatory frameworks as well so right now the end users just download a centralized app which is running from the cloud servers but since they want to benefit from one or more our services they buy our token i'm not just talking about buying but they create an organic demand on this uh, as supply and, and and demand 
so after creating this demand, the, the price gets higher as organically, and they stake it to a smart contract, to contract on, on the app, which is a decentralized and working on currently Tron ecosystem, Tron blockchain. It, it may be workable on other blockchains as well, Ethereum, etc. And since they use that token, uh, I don't want to name it, since they use that token, they benefit from ourselves. Once they sell, the contract is over. Think about a company that has thousands of contracts on this. You know, there are many paperwork around there. So we all benefited from this. This is a, not a calculated thing, actually. Uh, we need to give report at the end of this year. So yep. go on. <laughs> okay, guys. I um, just want to thank you all for your time. And um, I appreciate you guys uh, being here and listening to us. Um, it was really fun to hear about, um, from everything. Thank you.